Praise the Lord. How many of you glad tonight to be in the Lord's house? Amen. He's been so good to us. Thank you all tonight. Praise the Lord. The Lord is so good to us. I, I feel like God spoke something into our heart. I promise you I won't keep you very long tonight. But I feel like God spoke something to our heart today. Just reading in the Word of God. The Lord's done such a great, wonderful work here in this house tonight. And what God's going to do in the days ahead in these lives, I believe, is, is, is phenomenal. If you have your Bible tonight, turn with me to the book of John tonight, the 12th chapter of the book of John. And I promise you tonight I won't keep you very long. I don't have a watch, but I will promise that, that we won't keep you long tonight. Unless the Lord directs me to keep you long, and then I will keep you long. <laughs> Amen. That means if I get started, you can't quit. Yes. John 12 and 1. And it said, And then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, and whom that he raised from the dead, that there, may, that there made him a supper. Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the Bible says, And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And it said, And then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. For why was this ointment sold? Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? Then he said, Not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag, and he bore what was put therein. And then said Jesus, Let her alone, for again the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you. But I notice this, he said, But me you have not always. Now this was the words of our Lord. If you've got a, a red letter Bible, that, that will be in red in your Bible. But look at verse 9. I won't take our text from here. It said, But much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but, they, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Would you pray with me tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful heaven-bought privilege, God, that we've had tonight to be in this house and to be in the presence, Lord, of the Holy Ghost of your people. Lord, be in touch. We thank you for that. But Lord, I pray tonight that you would help us, God, to preach what I feel like you placed in our heart tonight. I ask you, Lord, for the anointing, for Lord, I can't do anything without you. Lord, we ask you for your blessings and your anointing on this part of the service tonight, asking these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. Mary came at this point in Scripture to anoint Christ for the burial. The Bible said that she took precious ointment and broke that box and that ointment. And I loved when I read, the Bible said, and the smell of the odor just filled the house. Yes, yes. It was a notable oh. something that was different at that point that had been done. Christ, as, as you, we read to you, Judas began to murmur about Mary breaking this ointment out and using it. And then his, his concern was about the money for himself. And he was concerned about that more than he was about anything else. And, time Jesus began to share with them that he's not always going to be there. He began to share with them that he's going to leave. Sorry about that. He began to share with them that he's going to leave and going to go away. And the Bible said he said that he would not always be there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we realize tonight that Christ lives on the inside of our hearts. If you're a born again believer, Christ lives on the inside of you and I. Jesus was speaking to them about his earthly presence and his bodily form, that he was not always going to be in their midst, that they 
they could just come in and sit down with him. You know, I begin to think about that and what a privilege that men and women had over 2,000 years ago to just sit down at the presence and at the feet of Jesus Christ. What a privilege it would have been at that time to have sat down and had that meal that they had there. What a privilege it would have been to have been in that room as that odor just began to disperse and, and people begin to gather and Christ said Mary is doing a great thing for me. She's placing this ointment upon me for my burial and they couldn't comprehend what he's saying but Jesus said I'm not always going to be here I'm not always going to be that you can come in here and sit down and have a meal with me but I am going away ladies and gentlemen there was something very intriguing as I read that I've, I've read this scripture and this passage I'm certain many times probably somewhere along the line I have preached from it but I read down through verse number 9 and verse 9 said much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there now I began to look at that and I thought man what a privilege it would have been to have known that Jesus was there to know that he's over here somewhere at a certain place that you could have just walked in now no doubt there would have been a crowd but the word of God said that many came not only to see Jesus but they came to see Lazarus also that caught my attention I began to realize and I thought Lord what can we do without you nothing Lord the world out there in this age that we're in right now wants to go through life many of them and they know about him they want to see but many of them never come into that personal relationship with Christ many of them never gather in and they never walk down to that place and and begin to touch him and have a part of Christ in their life. The Bible said in verse 9 it said much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus sake only but they came that they might see Lazarus also whom that had been raised for the dead. Ladies and gentlemen they came to be entertained by something other than what Christ could do in their heart and in their life. I begin to think about that in this age that we live in folks we must be very careful what our, what our goal in our, in our lives is about we can't do anything without Christ we can't do anything for the kingdom of God without him in our life and may we never lose sight of that there's all kinds of things out there there, there there's, there's mail that comes in this church just all of the time about let me send you this and to build the church this is what you need need to bring people and bring people in and to get people interested. Can I tell you something tonight friend? What we need at Jasper First Assembly of God is the presence of Jesus Christ in our midst every time we open the door. Amen. We don't need an occupational thing over there. If the church down the road does it and it works for them, glory to God. But ladies and gentlemen, may we work for the glory of of the kingdom of heaven for the purpose of Jesus Christ that he might work in the lives of the believers that they would draw closer to him and live for him day by day and live their life for him. Amen. Amen. I thought about it as I read this. The Bible said that they came not only for Jesus' sake, same, some did come for that. There's a world of people that do are entertained with things. But ladies and gentlemen, may we ever be careful careful that we put our faith and our trust and where our focus upon Christ above everything else. If the world only sees the, 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 the trinkets or the twinkling things, then the world will not see Christ. But may they see Christ above everything else. My prayer often has been that when I go out into that world and I do almost every day of my life. God made they see me. I was praying this last week. I, 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 I get to know a lot of people 
can I, and, and I befriend them and, and get to know them and, and, and interact with them somewhat. And I was praying this week. I was praying about going to work at this one particular place. And I said, God, you just help me to be a man of God like you would have me to be. I said, God, you just help me to speak just like you would have me to speak. Lord, just help me to work and to be like you would have me to be. I walked into that establishment and, and I've known these folks for years, been friends with, with them and, and, and with, with this lady and her husband, been friends with him before he passed away. And They're getting on up in years and I always love to joke and cut up with him, have a big time. And he passed away a few years ago and the last time I was there, it'd been several, it's been several years ago since I was there. She was just so broken with that and I talked to her about the Lord and talked to her about the goodness of God and the blessings of the Lord, what God can do for you. Amen. I went in there the other day and I was saying I was working there on the phone. She said to me, she said, Steve, it's so good to see you. She said, but before you leave today, she said, would you please have prayer with me before you leave? I said, sis, I'd be more than happy to pray with you today. Ladies and gentlemen, we must let the world see what lives on the inside of us. Not cover it up, not hide it out there, but let the world see Christ that dwells on the inside of you and I. But can I tell you, that's what's going to draw men to hang. That's what's going to keep men hanging on. That's what's going to draw them. It's going to be Christ that they desire and Christ will be what pulls them through. We find all kinds of things there that people says, let's do this to build that. And let's do that to get this. But oh friend, may Christ always be the center of everything that we point to. May he be the leader. May he be the guide. May he be Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. Because without him, we can do nothing. And I rely upon him. And I tell him often how frail I am and how weak I am, how bad I need him. And he knows that better than I even know it myself. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. How many people drive by Jasper First Assembly of God week after week after week and they know they need to be there? How many people drive by church somewhere and they know that they need to be with the people of God but yet they go on about their way and just in hopes that maybe one day everything will work out. Friend, I want you to know something. People don't have to come to Jasper First Assembly of God to be saved. People don't have to hear me preach to be saved. But they got to have Jesus in their life. They got to have Jesus in their life. And if a man or a woman don't have him, they're lost. They're lost. But isn't it the good news is this, Jesus Christ loved them enough. He loved them even knowing who they are, how they are, everything that they've ever done and everything that they're going to do. And he still loved them. And he loved them so much that he gave his life for them on the cross of Calvary. He doesn't desire for not one person to miss heaven. He doesn't desire for one person to go to hell. He doesn't desire that at all. He desires that all would come to him and repent of their sin and give their life to him. You know why? Because he loves men that much. You know, when we think about the epitome of love and we think about how much we love individuals and we think about how much we love our children, our spouse and people around us, we think about how much that, how great that love is. That love is not in comparison as to how much God loved mankind when he sent his son into this world. 
God knew seeing afore from this saying. It didn't catch God by surprise in the Garden of Eden, the fall of mankind when sin entered. That didn't catch God by surprise. That didn't just knock him off guard. You know why? Because God already had a plan in motion that when this saying comes to pass like we know that it's going to happen, I'll send my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for the remission of sin because there was nothing, no one else that was worthy to give their life. I thought about this as I read this Christ here at this point in Scripture. He says here in verse number 7, he said, let her alone for again the day of my burying has she kept this. Jesus said, the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. He said, you're always going to have people that, that are poor, but he said, you're not always here in for now. You're not going to have me with you. Amen. He desired that men would come to him and receive what they needed. As she began to anoint that and broke that alabaster box and began to pour that oil out upon the feet of Jesus, she began to show compassion and love toward him for what he had done for her. Not only what he had already done for her, but what he would do for her. You realize she knowing that he's the Lord and Savior, not knowing fully what's fixing to happen. But when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, knowing that her sins had been removed as far as the east is from the west. I'm coming to a stopping point right here tonight. I believe it's in Romans 8. And I want to think maybe verse 8, but it's in Romans 8. I'm pretty sure of that. Maybe not 100%, but pretty sure. The Bible says, There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. As Christians, you and I live daily with the force that comes by to condemn you. Don't think that that's a strange thing because that happens to you and it doesn't just happen to only you. It happens to all Christians. Because Satan is our enemy and the Bible says an accuser of the brethren. He wars against you and I daily. Ladies and gentlemen, don't ever think that it's a little thing because it's not a little thing. There is a force that wars against men and women of God every day of our life. Satan will dispatch the enemies of hell out and unleash them to come again, you and I, in every way, in every area that he can. Yes. But aren't you glad that we serve a God that will see us through everything that we face in this life? Yes. He said, there's now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We don't walk after the things of the flesh, but we walk after the things of the Spirit. Amen. Satan always comes by and tells people how that they'll never be able to live this, how they'll never be able to make things right, how they'll never be, how they'll never live up to that. Can I tell you something? The one that could live up to it died on the cross of Calvary and he paid the price in full. And do you know what I did a long time ago now? I accepted into my life what he done for me. I accepted what Christ done for me on the cross of Calvary. I repented of my sin and I ask him now to live inside of me and take my life and, and use me for his glory. Forgive me of my sins and my trespasses. Thanks be unto God that he done that. And what he did for me, he will do for you. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? Amen. What he did for me, he will do for you. And I realize tonight that we've already had an altar time and an altar service and it was good. But I don't want to ever give up this in a chance at an invitation to give somebody another chance, maybe sitting in this house tonight. 
you're not right with the Lord where you need to be and tonight you would like to come and invite Jesus into your heart and into your life tonight are there anybody anywhere sitting across this building you'd like to ask Jesus into your life tonight anybody anywhere tonight church keep on praying keep on seeking God's face I believe the Lord's getting ready to do something I just feel it I just feel it I, I just pray that in the days ahead we see an outpouring we see a stirring again we see a moving of the power of the Holy Ghost in each and every one of our lives my prayer is God fill us and refill us again amen, amen. praise the Lord praise the Lord it, it has been good tonight to be in the Lord's house and, and I thank you for coming this evening do want to make this announcement before we're going to have formal dismissal but uh, our senior adults ask you to, to stick around and, and meet with Brother Rex and Sister Mary I asked them last week felt like God had impressed on my heart to ask them if they would help Melissa and I to work with the seniors uh, because I, I told Sister Mary I said so much of the time I feel like maybe and not intentionally but I feel like maybe we've left you all out on a lot of the activities maybe that we've done because we've geared that up for the younger people and it's hard for us both working and they're going to take that responsibility and work there and, and I told them I'm just going to give you the rain and let you do what you feel like the Lord wants you to do in that and so we want you to stay tonight I ask you this morning to come back with maybe an idea something y'all would like to do and, and it, it makes me no difference how many times y'all meet uh, however how often don't matter to me at all but you all can hash that out and we ask you to stick around here and kind of discuss that because that's what they ask of us that you would just come bring your idea share that with them they're going to pray about that and begin to kind of coordinate those things begin to work in that and we're looking for great things to happen there would you stand with us tonight God bless you for being here and we